Hello, welcome back. In today's module, we're going to talk about financial services. So in this module, we're going to identify different types of financial services that you encounter in your daily life. Um, the services and the institutions or the companies that provide the services sometimes can be a little bit confusing. The reason why we need to have a good understanding of them is because some of these services are regulated and some of them are not. Uh, most importantly, you will learn to find resources for help if you encounter any problem or you need help finding this type of services. So let's get started. So what are financial services? In fact, financial services cover a very broad range of um, services. Uh, basically, anything that has to do with managing money involve some form of financial services. Uh, everyone, all of you who are watching the video today, use some kind of financial services every day. And uh, some services are uh, offered through one single institution and on the other hand some services may involve multiple institutions. Let's take a look at a couple of examples to clarify this. In the first example uh, you may have an account with a bank um, and most of most of us have an account with a commercial bank and that's where we deposit our paycheck and that's also where we make payments. So the commercial bank will be the same institution, so one single institution that provide two different services here. They accept deposit, so ca uh, cashing your check and or, or your paycheck and also provide payment. In this case, it can be an autom automatic payment to your rental uh, agency. Another common example that we encounter every day is making payment through an on, uh, through an app, for example, Venmo. Uh, you pay your friend using Venmo. When that happened, that particular transaction actually involved multiple financial institutions. Uh, so first of all, uh, your bank's your friend's bank has to transfer the money to Venmo, and then Venmo has to. Tr transfer the money to your bank. So at least three, and so occasionally there may be more than three institutions are involved in this one single transaction. The reason we want to have a good understanding of how this transaction occur is because if something does go wrong, we, know, we need to know how to address those problems. So when everything goes right, it is always fine. But if something goes wrong, then what happened? So for example, if your friend said he didn't, he or she didn't get the money that you sent, but your bank said, yeah, we sent the money. So now where did the money go? And who do you go to to follow through with that type of problems? So we're going to go through some of those examples in this lecture too. It is helpful to define the different types of services clearly. Uh, in fi uh, finance institu financial institutions, these are different types of services. Uh, the first is cash and payment services. Uh, this is the most common banking services. Um, so you can receive money and also use the money that you have. So for example, making deposit both in person or direct deposit, using ATM to get money, using your debit card to use money directly from your checking account, uh, paying your bills online or use or a mobile app, uh, automatic payment, recurring payment, all these are examples of cash and payment services. So this directly had to do with cash. So debit card are using money that you already have in your banking account. Another type of services again is involved uh, money that you already have are savings and investment services. So when you have excess front funds, so it's just, just what we talked about in your budget. So cash and payment services has to do with your uh, monthly or weekly inflow and outflow. So receiving your paycheck and, and making payments. And then when you have excess money, how, what do you do with that? How do you invest the money? You can, um, for short term and intermediate term, uh, you can put the money into a savings account or a money market account. Uh, though these are usually short term and intermediate term, this type of savings oftentimes occur with banks as well. And then when you're working with longer term investment goal, you may venture into uh, mutual funds or you use retirement uh, for your 
long-term retirement, you may use brokerage services for personal investing into stocks and bonds and mutual funds. So those are considered investment services. So these two types of services, cash and payment services and saving and investment services, tied directly into your financial plan of uh, ca managing your cash inflow and outflow and managing your investments. Another very important service is credit services. This credit in banking, the term credit refers to loans. So this is when you need to make purchases, but you don't have money to do so yet. So for short term, uh, we are talking about credit cards and um, so when we say not, not secure, that means that uh, if you don't pay your credit card, um, the, the, uh, the credit card company can only go after you personally. Uh, in the intermediate term, so these are loans that's between uh, less than five years or less than 10 years. Uh, those examples include home equity loan. And those are typically secure, meaning that you will use your house as a security against the loan. And if you don't make your payment on the home equity loan, then the bank can, uh, 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 can take over your house and sell it to pay off the loan that you took out. So that's what we mean by secure. Education loan, so student loan, these are not secure. Uh, so if you don't pay it back, then again, the bank can only come after you. There's nothing they can take back. In the long term, most long term loans are secure. Uh, for example, car loans, mortgages. So this, uh, if you don't pay your car loan, then the bank can come and take over your car or repossess your car. The same is true for a mortgage. If you don't make your mortgage payment, the bank can repossess the house. There are other types of quote unquote loans, but they are not really legally considered a loan and therefore they are not regulated. And that's something that you want to keep in mind. Uh, the reason why we want to highlight this is because they typically have very high cost, but they are hidden. So they are not, uh, they are not very clear. And oftentimes consumers can become trapped into these cycles of uh, continuously borrowing loan. Uh, the most notorious type are payday loans or buy now, pay later loan or buy here, pay here, car loans, rent to own, uh, car cashing or car title loans. Uh, we will go over each of these in details, but just be aware that these are not legally considered loans and therefore they are not regulated the same way. There are other services as well, and we'll go over them in more details later on in this class, uh, including insurance and estate planning. Uh, we already talk about preparation when we talk about taxes. So these are all different types of financial services. Next, we're going to talk about different types of financial institutions. So institutions are the organization that provides financial services. First, we're going to focus on regulated inst institutions. So regulated institutions include banks, um, in finance, they are called deposit institutions. Again, knowing the legal name or the legal terms is important because that helps you identify what governing agency they report to. And if you do have problem, where can you go for help? So deposit institutions include uh, everything from commercial banks and savings and loans, credit unions, and savings banks. So most of these institutions, their identity is part of their name. So they go to a savings and loan, the, the word savings and loans are in the bank's name. Uh, another type of uh, financial institutions are brokerage firms. These are stock brokers. Uh, you can buy stocks and bonds and mutual funds and other investments through them. And then there are investment companies. These are different from brokerage firms. Investment companies, they manage and sell mutual funds, but they don't sell stocks. And of course, there are credit card companies. Uh, the household names are Visa, MasterCard, American Express. Notice that these companies, they manage the brand of the card, but they don't issue the cards. The cards are issued by banks and other institutions. So we'll talk about that again in, uh, later on. Mortgage companies, as the name imply, they sell, uh, they originate mortgages. So that means you, when you need a mortgage for your house, you will work with a mortgage company. 
and then also insurance companies. So all these institutions are regulated by different regulators. More common, what we have operating today are conglomerates. A conglomerate is a holding company that have subsidiaries and the subsidiaries are different institutions and they all have the same umbrella name. Let's take an example. Citizens Bank is a pretty well-known commercial bank. So the bank itself is a deposit institution. They also have a mortgage company. And the mortgage, so you can take out a home mortgage from Citizens Bank's mortgage division. So it's the same name, but that's a different organization. They also have a brokerage firm and they have uh, other services as well. The important for you to understand is that each is a separate legal entity and they are all regulated by their respective regulators. This arrangement can sometimes be confusing for a consumer because you will walk into a single building and that one building will have a bank and you also have a mortgage company and you thought that that is all one institution. But the truth is that even when you are making payment from your account at Citizens Bank to pay your mortgage, which is also with Citizens Bank, it can still take time. It's not an instant automatic transfer. So I have money here why, and I'm paying the mortgage. Why does it take time? And the reason is because they are two separate legal entities. Let's take a look at another example. So instead of a bank having multiple entities, uh, there, uh, and, uh, Fidelity here, Fidelity is an investment company. They actually started off as a mutual fund company. Uh, so they have mutual funds, but they also have a brokerage firm. So those are two separate legal entity. They also offer credit cards and they also offer checking account because they, has, they also have a bank under Fidelity. Once again, each one of them is a separate legal entity. So you could have a, a Fidelity account and all of them will be under one website that you can switch from one account to the next, but they are legally separate. So far, most of the examples that we have used are uh, institutions that has a, what we call an on-premise presence or a brick and mortar uh, presence. So they, you can, you'll be able to go to an office or a bank or a branch of a bank and interact with uh, their representatives. But there are also institutions that are only online. Uh, even if the banks are online only, they have to be uh, get licensed through a traditional institution if they want to work, if they want to offer services that are regulated, such as deposit receive uh, deposit uh, transactions uh, or to make uh, check payments. So, for example, uh, PayPal and Venmo uh, they uh, they offer some kind of check payment services and they are affiliated with uh, banks. So you may, you may be using uh, PayPal or Venmo, but the transactions are executed by the, uh, by the respective affiliated banks. As we mentioned earlier, there are unregulated um, services and the institutions they associated, that offer these services are also unregulated. Uh, companies that offer payday loans or buy now, pay later, check cashing, cashing those are all not unregulated, so they don't they are not subject to regulations. Before the 2008 financial crisis, uh, consumers had a hard time getting help in terms of when, when they have problems with financial services. In fact, um, during the financial crisis of 2008, consumers find out that the mortgage that they took out with a bank has been sold to another institution and then they were they were also finding out that there were a lot of unsavory practices and consumers were bounced from regulator to regulator because uh, one institution originated the mortgage and then the mortgage gets sold to an investment bank which is regulated by a different regulator so as part of the regulatory reform 
after the 2008 financial crisis, a particular institution was created. It's called the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. The CFPB was created with the intention of helping consumers with all types of financial services. So that regardless of which regulator is involved with a particular financial institution, the CFPB becomes the first stop. As we said earlier, uh, in order for consumers to get help, it can be confusing because each type of financial institution is regula regulated by a different agency. More importantly, some institutions are regulated only by state agencies and not federal. Insurance is one such example. We mentioned earlier that there are a lot of financial institutions are actually conglomerates, meaning that under one name, one brand, there are many separate legal entities. So because each one is a separate entity and they are legally considered different, each one is subject to a different uh, regulators. So before CFPB, consumers can get banks from one agency to another. One agency will say, well, this really isn't under our regulation because this service is regulated by another agency. To avoid that, CFPB was created. So if you have any concern, CFPB, you'll see throughout this uh, entire uh, series of lectures that I refer to them a lot because they are really the first place that a consumer can go to with, uh, if they need help with, when they encounter any problem with financial services. But keep in mind that not all financial services are regulated. Some of them are not. Uh, this, um, the one of the common characteristics throughout these unregulated companies are that they tend to have very high fee and very high interest rates. And they, are, they, are, they tend to be predatory. They prey on consumers that are uneducated or undereducated. And they are particularly consumers that have no choice because these are individuals that don't have a bank account or don't have sufficient access to banking services. Uh, they are sometimes referred to as unbanked or underbanked households. Unbanked and underbanked households, uh, this is actually a lot, a uh, very serious problem for society. We're going to pause the video here. When we come back, we're going to take a deeper look at what are these unbanked and underbanked households and what can they do to become a bank household. See you soon.